Hey, what's up guys? My name is Faison and in this video, I'm going to show you how you should design your Science Olympiad ping pong parachute practice log so that you can significantly improve your results. Before we get into the video, please be sure to leave a like if you enjoy it. Drop any questions or feedback in the comments below. Follow me on social media. My links will be in the description below and subscribe to the channel because I post new videos about science, technology, and engineering, just like this, every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Now, let's get right into the video. So if you've read the rules for Science Olympiad Ping Pong Parachute, or you're just familiar with the event, then you should know that in order to get all the possible points for that event, you have to have a practice log and the rules require that your practice log has at least 15 different practice flights and five different parameters. And of those parameters, three of them are required. And those ones are launch PSI, um, the maximum height of the rocket, and the time that the ping pong parachute was in the air. And in addition to this, you have to have at least two other parameters and to, for your flight log to be complete. However, in this video, I'm going to show you why you shouldn't just limit yourself to just five parameters because there's a wide range of other things you should be recording and measuring before each flight because those are going to let you have a greater insight on what adjustments you should make in order to improve your results. And if you stay until the end of this video, I'm going to be giving you special access to a sample flight log template that I've made that you can use for free. So stick to the end of the video because you are sure to need it. So because I don't want to keep you guys here for too long, I'm just going to be going through the main points or parameters that you should be including and then a very quick and simple reason for why you should use them. But if you want a more in-depth discussion on this topic, I'll leave a link in the description below that will take you to my website where you'll not only be able to get that uh, template for the uh, ping pong parachute practice log, but you'll also get that in-depth discussion for each individual parameter and why they are super important for your practices. But in addition to the three required ones, the PSI, the PSI for launch, the maximum height, and the time aloft, you have to have at least five other parameters. Now, in this case, it's okay to go above that five parameters because you shouldn't restrict yourself. In fact, the rules say that you have to have at least five. So they're really just encouraging you to use new parameters that you could use to make adjustments and help your testing overall. But the first parameter that you should be including, other than the three required ones, is the weight of your rocket. Now, if you've been doing ping pong parachute before, or even if you're new, then you know that you want your ping pong parachute to not hit the ceiling whatsoever, because if you do, then you're penalized for it. And the most common way people measure the, or control the height at which the rocket goes is with the launch PSI. Now, if, now, if you don't want to change the launch PSI, say if you're already at the maximum 65 PSI to launch, then what else can you do? Well, a simple way to change that height is the height at which your rocket goes is to reduce the weight of your rocket. And this is a simple way to, or, a simple, or another variable that you can change to simply change the height at which your rocket goes. So I believe that it's pretty important that you record or at least know what the weight of your rocket is so that if you ever reach that point where you have to, where you can't go above the PSI you're using right now, that you have another way to adjust the height at which your rocket goes. But in addition to the weight of the rocket, you should be recording the diameter of the parachute. And this is because sometimes when you're making your parachute, you, your parachute may not open correctly. And this is because your parachute may be causing too much air resistance or too much drag. So if you record and change the diameter of your parachute, 
and you should be able to adjust that diameter until you get to the sweet spot of air resistance and drag that your parachute is creating and that's going to give you the best results. So in between your test flights, you should be recording the parachute diameter and the weight of your rocket. Now these next two factors sort of tie into the second one we talked about, which was the diameter of the parachute, but you should be recording the weight of the system that is deployed. And what I'm talking about is the mechanism of the ping pong ball, the strings that attach the ping pong ball to the parachute, and the parachute. So all of that weight together. Because what you're really trying to do is you're trying to reduce the weight of that entire system so that the ping pong ball has enough gravitational force to actually open up that parachute when it's dropped. Now, if you're able to reduce this as far as possible, then you'll be able to improve your results. And by recording this value, you should get a better idea of the correlation between weight and the time that the entire system is aloft. And the other factor that ties into air resistance and drag is the length of the string that connects that ping pong ball to the parachute. Now, as you increase or decrease the string, the amount of air molecules that the parachute is going to catch will change as well. So another way to change air resistance without having to change weight or any other or the parachute diameter is to simply change the length of string that, your, that, that connects the ping pong ball to the parachute. And the final parameter that you should be including besides the required ones is a note section. Now, I know it may seem redundant right now to just write down what changes you made because you can see all the numbers for what you are already measuring on your spreadsheet or your practice log, but just know that the note section is by far one of the most useful parameters for any building event because sometimes there are different things that you are not measuring with a numeric value. For example, if you are trying to put your ping pong parachute in a different mechanism, like you're trying to put on the parachute onto the rocket in a different way. And that's not something you can just put as a numeric value. You have to write that down or at the very least, remember that. So just putting a note section on your thing, on your spreadsheet or your practice log will allow you to have a place to store any other information that you need. Now you could just use this to write, okay, I, I put this much more PSI and this is what happened. Or you could use that to do other things that you can't really put into a number. So just know that if you have the space, you should be putting a note section on your practice log. Now, like I said at the beginning of this video, I will be giving you guys a free template for a ping pong parachute practice log. And you can find that in the description below on my website. Just click on that link and go to the bottom of that post. And there should be a button where you can get that free PDF version of the practice log for a ping pong parachute. And if you enjoy this video, please be sure to leave a like, drop any questions or feedback in the comments below. Follow me on social media. My links will be in the description below as well. And if you like videos about science, technology, or engineering, or if you want to support the channel, please be sure to subscribe because I post new videos like this every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And with that said, I'll catch you guys next time. Stay unfazed.